Thank you so much to Intel for sponsoring this video. I went on a little bit of a break and this is the best video for me to come back to because it's the video I look forward to the most out of the year. Also, we're still dealing with a lot of stuff, but thank you so much. You guys are so supportive and so loving. All the emails, all the messages, I read all of them and you guys are actually the best and made me feel so loved through this time that we really needed that extra little bit of love. Now let's get into the exciting part of this video, we are gonna be doing a Christmas Bake Off. Now the first year, we just got a lot of round cakes. There was this round cake was just a white cake with a stag on top. There was the other one that was like a round cake with some ornaments on top. And finally, we had another round cake, except it had this little scene on it with Santa and Santa's butt crack and a drunken reindeer with the milk and cookies. It was so funny. The second year, the baker started to really come through and elevate it. The first cake was almost these two tiered cakes, except they were hovering between each other by this floating tree, which was really, really cool. Then we had this really cool Christmas truck that the lights on it actually lit up, which that gave me so much inspiration for this video. And lastly, we had probably one of my favorite cakes to date, just because I love the movie so much. And this cake just like brought all my Christmas dreams come true. But we threw it to you guys to see what you wanted to challenge the bakers to this year. And did you guys come through? One, you guys wanted a set budget. So we set a $700 budget for them. Two, we did a little bit of height restrictions and width restrictions just so they can get in and out of the car and actually fit onto the table. Three, there must be at least one mechanical component to the cake. I am so excited for this. Whenever somebody brings me a cake that has something that lights up or does something, I think it's so, so cool. And it must be 3D. And the flavor for the cake has to be festive and complement the design. It can't just be a Christmas flavor. It has to complement what's on the outside of the cake. I'm super curious to see how they're gonna do with all of that. We also asked them to film some footage to see how they actually made some of these cakes. Cause we knew that you guys wanted to see what went into them. There's so much that these bakers can do with a three day cake. That's a winter cake. That's a Christmas cake. It doesn't have to be Christmas. It can just be wintry and festive. I mean, how fun is this? Also, I've gotten this like new obsession with gnomes. So if somebody does a gnome, cause I know they're kind of trendy. I will be here for it. But can we take it to the next level? I was obsessed with the baking show on Netflix, uh, Baking Impossible, oh, it's so cool. So they're taking engineering and mixing it with baking and doing all these mechanical things, but with food. That's what we're challenging the bakers to do today, but like on a smaller scale. I know it's not gonna be super crazy, but we're just looking for something that maybe moves, maybe plays music, maybe lights up, something that's gonna be mechanical. We have challenged the bakers in so many ways today, and I am excited to bring out the first cake. Let's go. You good? Just about. <laughs> All right, I can look? You can look. <gasps> oh, oh my god! Oh my god, it's moving! This is so, so, so cute. I can't wait to see the footage to see what they did to make this move, but that is so, so flipping cool. You started strong! Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Okay. I can't wait for the last cake. Honestly, they're all, they're all gonna be really good. I'm so excited. Okay, so the design of this is so fun. I like what they did with the, the cake board. It's very like vintage vibes. I love like the globe and the North Pole sitting on top of it. That's so fun. I can't get over it moving. Like I'm like paying attention. I'm like, oh, there's more things on this cake, but it moves. Like, <laughs> I love that they put lights behind all of this. So it's just kind of glowing behind it. I think that's really pretty. And then the lights on here are more like Christmas lights that you'd see on a house, which is super cute. I like want to know more of like the story and the whole thought process behind this. Cause this is not the type of cake that you just find on Pinterest. This is extremely creative and out of the box. Is this the same one who did the castle? Yes. You don't know. It is? Yes. The death castle that was like this whole story that was just super creative and out of the box. Yeah. They like did little bricks around the battery pack. Look, I can like turn it off and then turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that tree is real or that is it plastic? One? That looks like plastic to me, but it's sticky like candy. That's a little sprinkle star on it. These are little sprinkles. I'm pretty sure it's an edible tree. Bite it. All right, let's see what went into this. <gasps> she even did a little sketch. So we can see like her whole thought behind it. Sugar tree, it's a sugar tree. You're right. And then images of kids waiting for Santa. Oh, it's photos of kids waiting for Santa and Santa come. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that I know that now. 
That's her creating the texture and the color on the globe. Maybe that's what she built all of like the, this snow around. I think that's the sugar for the tree. No, I think it's the little snowflake. Okay, we can see it sticking out of here, but I still don't know. No, there's no shot. We don't know what is going on inside to make this spin, which makes me sad because that's what I like really, really want to know. The cake flavor sounds pretty interesting. I can't wait to taste it at the end of the video, but for now, let's move it out of the way. Before I bring up the next one, I want to thank Intel for sponsoring this video and thank them for being the best partners to work with. As you guys know, I just got back from a very well needed break and I was actually at the airport when I posted my last update video, but that was the last bit of work that I did before downloading Movie for the plane and just enjoying my trip. Of course, even though I was on a break, I still brought my laptop with me because being a creator means I can work remotely from wherever I am in the world. But I must confess that I used it more for movies and gaming on this trip than anything else. Intel Evo laptops are built for an incredible premium experience with no compromises. There's a reason why they're one of the most competitive brands of laptops on the market. They have a sleek design and wake in under one second, have fast charging and long lasting battery life, touch screens, and no matter how many programs I have open, it keeps up with me. Funny enough, filming YouTube videos is only a small portion of what we do from day to day. There is so much more that goes into this business and having a laptop that can keep up with me is everything. Aside from streaming and gaming for fun, I can upload content, work on my website, edit photos and videos, join my team on Zoom and plan out all of my content and be the complete clutter brain I am with a million tabs open. Being thin and lightweight, it is my favorite travel companion. It goes everywhere I go, even when I'm not supposed to be working. You guys can click the link down below in my description box to learn more about Intel Evo laptops and how they are the jack of all trades. Now let's bring out the next cake. Okay, please balance. That's not balancing. No, Kevin. Oh my goodness. No. Do you need help? Uh, not yet, hold on. Okay, we'll put it on the turntable after. Okay. Ready for I me? I am ready for you, come on in. I can look, I can look, I can look. You can look. <gasps> oh my God, oh my God, Santa, oh my God. <gasps> It spins and it sings and it has lights on it. I need to turn around. I need, ah, oh, I need to see more of it. Okay, give me a sec. This one's not as heavy as the last one that you had a little bit of a panic over. Ah! Okay, well, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> the tree started tilting towards me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's pick up at the same time. <laughs> one, two, three, lift. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Ah! Okay, just hold it there. It's tilting too much. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is so cool. Like not only is it Santa, but it's Santa baking. Um, thank you. Is he like like holding up a cookie and saying peace? <laughs> Maybe. Is that Maybe what? Santa's about world peace today. That is so cute. I love that like the apron has little gingerbread on it. And then he's got a little gingerbread cookie, which it looks like a cookie to me. Maybe it's an ornament, but then why is it in a bag? I have questions. I'm guessing it's a cookie and it's in its packaging. Yeah, but then there's gingerbread ornaments. Maybe Santa just really likes gingerbread. Get, but then he has an apron on. But then I was like, why isn't it and baking? He's also table? got a chef's hat with a gingerbread man on it. So it has to be baking. He's baking gingerbread ornaments. <laughs> I think he's baking gingerbread cookies. Who bakes ornaments? But they're on the tree too, Kevin. Because he really, are we really gonna debate this right now? <laughs> I need to he's understand it to get through this. <laughs> Either way, it's really, really cute. I. I'm really paused at his hair and beard. What happens with cotton candy, no matter what you do, it deflates pretty quickly. It doesn't, not the type of thing that lasts for days. And what we've kind of ended up with is I can see the fondant kind of beard underneath the cotton candy. And now we've got like a stringy kind of holy cotton candy where there's chunks at the back where it looks like Santa has like a little bit of a bald spot. And then there's no fur on his boots. But like, I can appreciate the direction to what looked really cute when they first decorated it, but it's definitely something to think about when you're thinking about the longevity of your decorations. Cause right now it doesn't look, I'm guessing what they wanted it to look like when they presented it. And it's only been a couple hours. So let's have a moment for 3D standing Santa. This is like 3D to a next level. The tree, it looks almost like a sponge, but it's actually little chunks of cake that have been dyed. But I've never seen somebody use that technique to create a tree. And I think it's really, really beautiful. And I've got two tones going on here. It has more dimension to it and it spins and sings. I haven't said much about this little dresser here. I don't think it's a dresser. I think it's like a baking station. 
It's a really pretty baking station if that's a baking station. He's Santa. What do you expect him to bake on some white table from Ikea? Some white table from Ikea? <laughs> Yeah, I guess Santa would be a little bit more elevated than my white table. <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm like, why is this beige and these have like a luster to them? Maybe she forgot to paint these, but it's still really, really beautiful. If it is supposed to be a baking station, can I have like a bowl of flour or some like rolled out cookie dough or like a rolling pin where he's making the cookies? Like that's where it's like bring it full round for me, but it's still really cute. Kevin's just giving me the eyes, like, really? We have a spinning musical Christmas tree. I know, but to me, it all has to make sense. You guys let me know. Overall, the design, how all of these elements are working together, the Santa and his, like, little outfit is freaking adorable. I just think the whole thing works. Oh, wait, wait, we forgot. Oh, yeah, we footage. See, we're not used to having footage. Archie, why are you peering at Kevin? Archie. <laughs> We tried to get the footage. It's not here yet, but I'm gonna film it and do it after and I'll just like insert that clip here. The footage came in, it's a little bit dark in here because it's a bit later, but we can start seeing how she constructed it. So it looks like they took like an actual wooden cake board. They're putting like bolts on it for the legs. There's a lot of like construction that's going into this. You'd have to do a lot of planning. It's not just like get out a cake board and a cake and start building. Look, the little gut, <laughs> a little underbelly. <laughs> that's definitely Rice Krispie. That is super cool. It's really nice to see the construction that goes in behind of everything that we're seeing out on the top of it. The mechanical component of this whole cake is all in the tree, but there's no footage on the tree itself. This is plastic here. So I feel like they just got like some sort of music box or something that would spin and took off maybe the, like the spinning component and put on a styrofoam tree and then decorate it. That would be my guess. Just give me a sec, there's instructions on everything. Hurry <laughs> up. Nobody told you you had to face the wall like that. Yes, but then That's I'm like gonna see. That's like you're playing see. hide and seek. <laughs> That's legitimately what it looks like. You're like up against the wall starting to count and I'm gonna go hide somewhere. Because otherwise I'm gonna be too tempted to look and open my eyes. Just get the cake! Okay. Oh. Oh. Mm. Can I come in now? No. Mm. How many instructions are there? Lots of instructions. You need to hurry up. It says allow a few minutes for it to take effect. Oh my God, I'm sitting down. <laughs> oh, it's definitely making noise, but nothing's happening. Oh, oh, something is happening. Oh, that's fun. Kevin! Oh, you're gonna love it. Oh. Okay, ready? Hold on, hold on. Not yet. Um... You were such a tease. Can I come in? <laughs> yes, you can come in now. Okay, can I open my eyes? Yes. Okay, yeah, do all the instructions. Switch? Yeah, that's one of them. Do the other one. Switch? Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Oh! This is the best cake ever. This is so fun. <laughs> okay, hold on. We got music, we got lights, and we have a smoke machine? Yeah, they use an infuser to create like smoke in the hot tub. Oh my gosh, guys. Like I can't get over this. This is the same bakery that did like the drunken reindeer with like the milk and cookies. And now <laughs> we've got like rain beer. <laughs> and a hot tub. See, the whole story, the story of it. It is December 26th, vacation, he's done. This is what reindeers do after all the Santa helping and, and he's just ready to party and have a nice soak after a long winter's worth of Christmas work. This is amazing. I just want to know whose bow that is he's got up there. Who's the other frisky reindeer who's, his bow left? the bow from? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like they were, what more can we do? What more can we do? What more can we do? Like I would never have imagined smoke. And just like throw an actual thing. <laughs> I love that it's just a card though. It is a it's card. It's just a Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> I love the night sky, all these little night, like little stars in the sky. I feel like that's such a creative way of doing lights. You could just throw lights on there but that was really creative. And they've got the snowy scene going in the background, even the cake board. Like you can see all these little like cobblestones, the candy cane ladder. I love that level of creativity when you're thinking about a theme, that's so fun. And the work that's gone into the figurine, when you're creating characters, one little thing that's off and the whole thing can fall apart and just not look right, it's nailing it. And I even like these like little lights that are draped around. I love that they brought the story in for me and the little <laughs> little slipper. Like it's all the details for me. It's really amazing and blown me away.
This one we don't have that many shots of. Lots of pipes happening. Can't see what they're doing with it, just like all the tools. I think this is them just dusting the board to create all that dimension. I think this is the trees for the background. So we don't have a lot of footage of like how they actually did the cake, which is too bad. To me, mainly I'm curious how they piped this in. I can see where the tube is kind of coming in but how is it funneling out in all of these different points? Like I see holes. I really would have loved to seen how they plan that out and what that looks like underneath. I think let's get the three of them together. What did you say to the dog? I didn't say anything to the dog. Then why what? is he over there like pouting? Because he's a weirdo. Hi, good boy. Do you have your handsome sweater? He's just a cute little weirdo. Don't, don't hate on him. This is such a festive table. Honestly, it's heavy like, humming Christmas carols in between looking at all the cakes has really put me in the festive mood because these are just so cool and so beautiful and so Christmassy. I love it. They're all so different too. I can't wait to see how they taste because remember it has to taste good, be festive and complement the design. That's a hard thing to pass. Start with drunken reindeer over here. I think we're going to have to tilt the camera that way. Stop it. Yeah, that's it. People also want to see how... <laughs> Kevin. Beautiful slice, Larry, <laughs> as always. It's fine, everything's fine. They just need to like, there we go. <laughs> it's enough to taste it. It's enough to taste it. So vanilla funfetti cake with eggnog filling. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. <laughs> I should probably say that I don't like eggnog. It's very eggnoggy in the <laughs> filling. But the, the Funfetti like really, really complements the filling so it's not too sweet. And the icing is smooth and creamy and delicious and the filling is smooth and creamy and delicious and it has like a lot of flavor. If you like eggnog, you would love this cake. It's so good. As far as how they did with the flavor and the design of the cake, I think eggnog for the flavor is perfect because you've got a drunken reindeer and eggnog usually has some sort of like spiced rum or something in it. Although, then maybe he should be holding like a little champagne glass of like eggnog and have like a little carton of it or something. Maybe reindeer is eggnog based. Maybe. Can you see the ingredients in the back of the bottle? <laughs> no. <laughs> so the character is gingerbread cake with a caramel frosting. And then the table is a chocolate cake with a mint frosting. So that definitely is fitting into the gingerbread theme. This isn't gonna be a pretty slice either. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're like a Michelin star cake slicer. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Oh, I hate you so much. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little, I'm just gonna knock the corner off the back of that. And I feel like the green is coming up from like the green candy cane, so maybe it's supposed to be a mint candy cane. Okay, let's do the gingerbread and caramel. What a Mmm. Oh, it's so good. It really tastes like a gingerbread cookie, but in cake form. And gingerbread cookies are very strong. I don't think you want a lot of this cake, but it is absolutely delicious. That is creamy and the caramel is such a beautiful touch to it. Super, super, super tasty. Chocolate cake with a mint chip filling. I see like chunks of chocolate. It looks like a really beautiful texture. Mm. I also don't like mint. <laughs> I'm not a mint chip person, but this is probably the best mint chip anything that I've had. The chocolate cake is absolutely beautiful. It's so moist and light, but there's layers of like cookie or chunks in here. That's just adding this really nice chocolatey texture. The mint is really subtle, but it's really, really good. And the last cake is also a chocolate cake with a mint chocolate chip filling. So lots of mint for me today. <laughs> I don't think I got any filling in there. Oh. So I'm hit the power lines. <laughs> I was I was hitting one of the skewers. That was what was happening. Okay, let's see what it tastes like. It's really similar. I mean, it's chocolate cake with a mint ch chocolate chip filling, so they're very similar. But I will say I think I prefer the thin layers of chocolate kind of cookie that were in this one compared to the chunks of chocolate chip in this one. But the flavor is really good. This is nice and subtle. I think overall, like I love all of them. They're so unique. This video just made me feel so festive. I hope it makes you feel festive too. I think the cake design I like the most. Oh, 
has to be this one. They're all so, so amazing. But this one, it came through with like the fog machine, which was insane, but still the lights and still the music and just like the whole design and story. I love it. And as far as flavor, I would still go with the eggnog one, which I'm shocked. I'm not a big eggnog person. And thank you so much, Intel, for being such amazing partners this year and sponsoring this video. You guys can check out the link down below and learn how Intel is the jack of all trades. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and subscribe and hit that like button for me. It really helps us out. And head on over to the community tab as well and you can vote on which cake you like best. Love you guys.